What's up guys? It's your girl Ari and welcome to A Pinch of Ari. Today I will be showing you my secret recipe for the fluffiest mashed potatoes in the world. Let's get started. Okay, so first we are going to just peel our potatoes and I am doing this with an actual peeler, but you can use a knife. It's really just up to your personal preference. And I like to use Yukon Gold Potatoes. They're the best. Overall, I like to keep my videos fairly short and to the point, so I already started peeling these potatoes, but I did leave this one behind so that I can demonstrate how to actually use the peeler for those who are unsure. I also wanna give a quick shout out to my grandma because she actually taught me this recipe when I was little, so really, she deserves all the credit. Yes, look at how pretty these potatoes are. But now we are just gonna slice them very thinly so that they cook faster and mash easier. And I'm actually showing you guys two methods. So the first is me actually cutting the potatoes in my hand. And then the second will be me cutting them on the cutting board. See, I really look out for y'all. I'm really teaching y'all how to cook out in these streets, okay? <laughs> Can we all just ignore the fact that that potato flew across the room? <laughs> Thanks, fam. Okay, when you're done slicing, your potatoes should look something like this. And note that they're not all identical in size, and that's okay, because we're just gonna mash them anyway. Oh! bars y'all heard that <laughs> sorry back to the video all right so next we're going to chop up one fourth of an onion and this is where the flavor is y'all please don't forget this step All right, so our onions are chopped and I am just picking through them a little further because some of my pieces were just a little too big. I also pushed some of my onions off to the side because it was just a little too much. So this is really how much you should be using. Moving along, I'm just going to add some salt and pepper to this water. And then when it boils, I'm going to throw in the onions and the potatoes. And with the salt and pepper, it's just to taste. There's no specific measurement. Lately, I have been the queen of burning myself. I really don't know what's going on with me, but we're just having a good laugh. I wanted to keep this in here so that you guys can see that cooking does not always go perfectly. <laughs> They are all added to the water now, and I'm just going to let them do their thing and cook. So I've set my heat to medium high, and we're just gonna wait for about 10 minutes or until they're done. And you can tell if they're done by poking a fork or a knife through, and if it goes through without any resistance, you're good. Sometimes I also check to see if my potatoes are done by just eating them. Shh, keep my secret. I have moved on to the next step, which is straining. And the key with this is to actually leave a little bit of water left in your pot. Now there's so little in here that you can barely even see it, but that's what you want. You just don't want them to be fully dry because then they won't come out as creamy and they will be harder to mash. 
I'm also going to add about six tablespoons of butter, but gradually, and then I'm gonna mash, 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 a mash, mash. <laughs> Y'all like my song? So I forgot to mention that the heat is actually not on right now. It's just sitting on top of the burner and you have to mash these as soon as you're done straining them because if you don't, they will not come out right. And lastly, when you feel like you're done mashing, you are just going to add in a few splashes of milk just to give it that extra creaminess that we desire and you are finished. Yay, they are finally meshed, so stick around for the final pictures. Alright guys, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.